spaghetti again. Let's have a look at what this uh, bit of spaghetti here is on my table. It's my Seiden Fandania Mitrata, which I've had for two and a half years. And it was doing quite well because last year it grew seven growths. However, those growths stalled, the majority of them, except for this one, which was definitely not long enough compared to what it can do, which is all the way down here. And the roots are super, super sensitive. I have all these dangly roots here, and yeah, they're covered in algae, but I'm not bothered about that. But basically, this plant hangs in water almost all day, simply because of the moisture levels. I'm, I'm not able to keep the roots up here moist enough. I've tried microfiber, sphagnum moss. Um, I have it backed up with lava rock, and I put it in this basket, trying to thinking that when I took it off the mount, it would be okay because it has more substance and more humidity, and that is not enough either. I've got two new growths coming here right now, so we'll see what how they do. But what I've decided to do with this one is to plunge it into a semi-hydro self-watering setup. Because quite frankly, I can't watch these roots doing what they're doing. It's been two years. As much as I'm loath to move a plant out of what it's accustomed to, there also comes a point in time in my growing environment that I say, okay, enough already. We have one more option that we're gonna do. And if it doesn't work then, then it wasn't a plant that was meant for me. So, see, I even did the, I did the um, like hydro, hydrating, humidity, humidity amplification system with my microfiber strips. But that worked out to be kind of futile because it didn't help the roots at all. So this shouldn't be too difficult to get out. Says she that thinks that nothing has grown. Maybe something has grown in the meantime. Who knows? Who knows? We're soon to find out. Do I want to cut this off? Let's see. Let's get this off. I spent quite some time putting this little contraption together, but the orchid was not well pleased. My efforts were not rewarded. So let's see what it does now. There was lava rock, there was a microfiber strip in the back as well. And that was about it. So unfortunately, it wasn't happy, even with all the added chances of humidity. So I'm going to put it into a semi-hydro setup and hope that it has a recovery point and accepts its new home. I don't know what to do about these um, big roots yet, whether I'm gonna cut them off. That's why I took a very large pot. I know it does look oversized. And I am a little bit wary, but you know, if it does adapt into the setup, then I can always change it into a smaller pot if need be. But for the time being, I do need these roots to get hydrated, to help the plant adjust and adapt quickly. And I'm going to keep them. So I'm putting my microfiber strips back up. This time I'm not making a loop. In this case I'm not because the pot is too tall. So all I'm going to do is leave the strips lengthwise as I fill the lecker in. And then the dangly bits go back into the reservoir as we do. How are we doing? There. All right. So let's see. I do have some dead roots but uh, it's not like I have to do major anything on this because this hasn't done major anything at all. 
blockchain. Sometimes you toy with an idea for so long, it probably could be too late. But the thing is, I couldn't spray these roots too much either because it would um, have affected the growth, which it did inevitably affect the growth. So both my guesses were not compatible with my thought process. Live and learn, live and learn. Okay, let's turn you around and have a look. There's something stuck there. You're okay, you look terrible, but you're okay up to there. Oops, you're definitely okay up to there. Let's have a look on this one. Where are you threading from? Right there. I do want to keep the long ones as long as possible. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, bye. And let's hope that I can get this back to its former glory, which wasn't really that for that bad hit to begin with, because when it was on the mount, the mount itself was moldy and smelling really bad. So pretty much, I took it off the mount and wanted my inorganic theme to continue, not giving it much thought with regards to can it handle it or not. So I just thought I, with all the humidity things, the microfiber, the lava, the this, the that, sticking it in a pot, roots only, I thought all that would be sufficient, but it's clearly it's not. So I don't know how this one is going to go in. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We have the growth. Up, the roots down, that would make sense, wouldn't it? There's a bit of fiber tucked in there. See these root growths, these growths here, they fail. Because I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Seven new growths in the first year, I mean, you know, <laughs> who's going to argue that? Oh, yeah. And then we have a year later and none of them actually thrived. So, Initially, I thought I'm going to put it in here and stick all these roots into the pot and leave the dangling ones hanging over the edge. I know that looks stupid, but they have been in water for so long in their life, I'm also now curious if they will accept being in the pot. So that is actually what I'm going to do, because honestly, the past year, I've had this work it more in water than I did outside of it, except for the nights, of course. So now that I've got this in here, somewhat, shame the roots, you know, when they start, when they start growing, they are awesome. It makes you so excited and then poof, they dry. <gasps> and some of them, even just by a single movement or a touch, you know, incredible. So that's kind of the plan in there. Now I have to dig in and get that microfiber into some kind of position up a little bit. And yeah, the roots again, they're all the way down. And I'm not, I'm not too fussed about that because, okay, here's my lucky bucket and it's heavy. Right, I'm not too fussed about them being all the way down. Cause like I said, they've been in water for so long on such a regular basis. That pretty much, no, they'll be okay. So I've got one strand in the pot in my hand, trying to lift the other one up now. And failing miserably because it keeps slipping out. There. And now I need a third hand. Ta-da! No, just kidding. I tried to bother her as little as possible. I mean, she would come down in a heartbeat to hold something and it's all happened before when she would walk into the kitchen and I'm by actually and only I do this in the kitchen and she's I'm like oh I'm so glad you're here hold this so never a complaint 
from her. But let's see if I can do it on my own. So I've got the two strands in my hand, quenching my fingers there at the bottom. And let's get a, the filling. Remember my, my little pots? I love it. Just drain out the water. I want to see how the growth from last year responds. If it grows any bigger, the one in the middle I showed you at the beginning. And I want to see how the new growth develop. Is there any improvement with regards to the speed? Because these should be quite fast growers. They don't have much time, they don't have any thick leaves. They need to get going, they need to get a move on relatively fast. So, I have let go of one strand. Now I'm going to fill that up and leave the other one a little bit higher than the previous one. And if you can't hear what I'm saying because of the letter, I'm sorry. Comment below and I shall fill in the blanks. All right, so we have one part done. Goodness me, this part is going to take a lot of lacquer. But I think I have enough before the lockdown, as, lo as, lo as the lockdown continues. I really don't have that much to pot or repot. And uh, if need be, then, you know, an orchid stays outside or sat in like a little bit of water for a couple of days while I sterilize the lacquer it was in instead of using new lacquer. So it's not that big of a deal. But I would have liked to have this one in a smaller pot, again, because of space issues. Space issues. See, in winter, this, this pot wasn't part of the real estate. This was a hanging plant, so I had space for it. Yeah, potting it up will be very helpful, I'm sure. Okay, let's say, I am positively hesitant, or the other way around. It'll do it a lot better. Whether it keels over after that is a different question, but it will at least hydrate it. But then in the winter, I will have issues as to, you see, my, my spaces are all quite allocated. I do know what pot goes where, even when the room is empty. Sorry, did you even hear what I said there? <laughs> I know what pot goes where, even when the room is empty. And at this point in my head, I cannot allocate its space for the life of me. Maybe a little bit further down the road. You never know. There might be losses. There might be losses in the orchid hobby. In this case, it might just be this one. I mean, it's not like I'm doing what I'm doing to kill it, really. Or to make a video. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, honestly. As much as I'm starting to enjoy the filming and talking and I'm getting a little bit more fluent and not so staccato, must be terrible to listen. Whoa, sorry. I just noticed how the camera jolts around. I'm so sorry. I'll try and lift the pot up and do it again without all that nauseating effect. I do apologize. So, I think, I mean, if I could mess and fuss with this much, much longer, like everything is well covered but the big roots they are inside the long ones they will get a lot of hydration these short ones the only reason i want to kind of bury them and i'm going to use my old lava rock from this plant is because i don't want them popping up and climbing out of the pot just yet every plant that i have that is adjusting i want those roots in the pot and I don't, I don't want to be fighting roots coming out of the pot if, if the hydration is in the pot. So I make sure initially... You know, I brought Tear Tear... I make sure initially that he... Oh, now he's got me all confused again. But I make sure initially that all the roots I can muster get into the pot. And then the other ones can do what they want. But in this case, there will also be microfiber strip over the top which I don't have with me, but picture a microfiber strip across the top, just to encourage these roots to understand what I'm expecting of them. And now to Thierry Henry. 
just before I started this video, I decided he could come to this side of the real estate and just hang out with me here on the carpet underneath what is my dining room table, which is now a desk. No, he has gone all the way around. He's gone out the terrace door. He's gone all the way around into the living room terrace door. And now he's parking for my attention and quetching on the other side. You hear him? Yeah. So what I just did was stop the video, go get my munchkin, because he did the full U-turn out there, in order to be able to sign off politely the way I was brought up, <laughs> thanking everybody for joining me on this bizarre little experiment of my Seidenfadenia mitrata, and let's hope that it now does a lot better. Because even if it does a bit better, it was already a lot better than what it's done before. Because I do like the pendant, the pendant nature of it. I would like to see it bloom. But if it doesn't, then I hope that this is its last resort and that it hopefully takes off. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all next time, hopefully soon. Any suggestions how you grow this are very, very welcome. Remember, I'm in the Mediterranean climate, that I don't have all this high humidity outside as I would like. Um, so let me know. Do you have it in a semi-hydro setup? Do you have it mounted and it's just growing like a weed? And uh, I'd be interested, very. So thank you for watching once again. I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.